The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hey, looking good, folks. Uh, feeling good. This is Billy Ray Valentine from the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In good times and bad, we bring you the best information we possibly can. I've posted the uh, charts for the DAX and also for the uh, FTSE, and I've also pointed the one for the crude oil. Folks, as soon as crude oil gets below 21, it sets up a target of 12 bucks. And if people aren't traveling, they're not going to be using gasoline. And gasoline is trading at 55 cents a gallon uh, on the futures markets. Not that way in the in the pumps yet, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Um, yesterday, something very, very dramatic happened, folks. I wanted to bring it to your attention. Uh, remember now, I'm just just a technician. Uh, I, you know, I don't understand the fundamentals or anything, but I do. I do watch the numbers, and I try to keep close uh, contacts uh, with those. So, just wanted to show you. If we'll start out here with the uh, the big daddy rabbit, which is the old Nasdaq, and you'll notice here after we made our high up here, up around 9,800, we came down to 66 and change. Yesterday's high was a 382 retracement of that high that we made on uh, February the 19th. Now, if you like Fibonacci numbers, and I think some of you do, we'll take a look at another one that is interesting, and that is the. Uh, and I, I miss this. I, I well, it happened on the. It happened after the close. I'll tell you the story behind that in just a second. And all I need to do now is to find that little puppy and I'll bring it up to your kid. Here it is. I think right here. Here's your E mini. And I want to get this up here and show you, folks. Uh, uh oh, just one second here. Here's the E mini S and P, and you'll notice here that that number and the S and P came within 1.5 points of being exact 382 off of the high at 3393. Uh, if that means anything, I'm not sure that it does, but it's a five-day rally, A B C D in a bear market. We backed off quite a bit uh, from that level here. If you remember yesterday when we were in here, I posted the, the forecast for the AI program, and I just want to show you what happened and the story behind it. Here was the uh, forecast that we we're looking at. You can see we we're up here at around uh, 2590 uh, in the S&P, and as we got to that point, I was looking uh, to try to uh, you know put a, a trade on here. Uh, for the SPY, because I know it's an ETF, and so it's a lot crazier than the future. So what I did was I, I sent out a, a notice to everybody, just as it was happening, that we were trading at 28.60. Buy had been uh, 20, uh, two, uh, 258.60 is where it was. Buy was at 259. Um, I think 47 was the high, and so I said, yes, that looks like it's going to be pretty good, and I, uh, it looked like it was going really well, and so what I did was I put in a order uh, with with an hour to go. We were ahead uh, two handles, which, you know, it's not, that's about almost 1%, but you notice here that um, I canceled the buy stop at uh, 260.33. That was the original one, and I lowered the buy stop to the high of the day. That meant the loss on this trade would only been, you know, 0.79 cents, which is, you know, relatively small. Well, the market in the last five minutes, well, last 15 minutes, we moved 500 points in the Dow Jones, and uh, that took this S&P up to the exact. I mean, to the tick, 382 of that high back in February, folks. If you believe in Feb, if you believe in Fibonacci numbers, and we close lower today, I wouldn't want to be long stocks. I don't know about you. I got an interesting email this morning from my good friend Larry Williams, and uh, he made that incredible call that he was buying Sunday, much like what Tom Hugard was doing, and. Um, 
I, I told him, I said, you know, I've known you for 55 years. I said, I've seen some great calls. I said, but that might have been the best. He said, he said to me, he said, Larry, he said, it might have been the best. He said, but you're the only one that noticed. So that, that tells you a lot about blind hogs picking up an acorn. So who knows? Anyway, um, I want to show you a chart here on uh, one of the uh, foreign exchange uh, things that we usually keep an eye on. And that is the, uh, because it's in the news today because of Boris Johnson. Uh, contracting the disease. You'll notice that we have this uh, in the purple. You'll see the three drive to a bottom pattern there. This is a weekly chart, so it went back a long, long way, and we got down to that 114 level. Uh, we've been watching that level for you know a great deal because it was a long-term A, B, C, D pattern uh, to the downside, and uh, now we've had this pretty good move. We rallied you know eight points here. Uh, this week. So it's been a pretty good move. We've had big moves, of course, uh, in the euro that we were able to take advantage of, and also in that Japanese yen on both sides on the Japanese yen, which was nice. But I suggest, and I don't know, uh, this is my two cents worth, and I I should give you the moral to the story. Anyway, I get a phone call last night about uh, 3.30, well, no, yeah, it was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, long after the um, it was about 4.30. It was about half an hour after the market closed, and it was from one of the people uh, that subscribes to the 24-7. He was very, very angry, and uh, his anger was that uh, he didn't get the notice of the change in the stop until the market had closed, and so he was still in the position, and he was extremely angry because he was out about $1,500 when he should have been out about $400. And I told him, I'm very sorry. I said, I'm doing the best I can. I said, look, I said, wait till the open and, you know, maybe you'll, uh, you know, maybe it'll turn out okay. And he said, oh, that's not going to happen. The market's going straight up. I said, well, maybe so. But, and now he's going to come in this morning with about a $3,500 profit, but I'm sure that uh, we won't hear anything about that, but that's neither here nor there. Hey, folks, I do the best I can here. That's all I can tell you. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy all the people that I've met here. But by golly, you know, uh, I, all I can do is what I can do. And believe me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm limited uh, to my ability. And uh, I'm not as smart as some of the people that are out there. But I try to, to keep things as simple as possible and keep the risk as small as possible. That's the one thing uh, that, I, that I know I will do, but we'll see. The other thing I want to mention is uh, be sure that you, uh, if those of you that belong to the 24-7 and get the newsletter, uh, each week. Be sure that you look at the commodity section this week, folks, because we're going to have some great opportunities in here uh, over the next few weeks and months, and I think that we need to start uh, taking a quick look at those. And one of those being, of course, possibly for natural gas. But remember, we are living in an era where we don't have uh, any idea. If you remember, folks, uh, the diagram, let's bring this up here so we can bring it up to show you, because we've exceeded our, uh, we've exceeded our levels this week which is not a good sign, and that's mainly because of what's happening in New York City, which is getting the bust of this here. There's, uh, you see, uh, th uh, three weeks ago, uh, four weeks ago, we were at 8,700, then 1734. This week, we should have ended at 69,600, and we're way above that. Uh, and that's me. We're in the fourth week of a 15-week uh, six. In other words, it's doubling every six weeks. But in New York, it was doubling every three days. Instead of every six days, it was doubling every uh, three days. And that was because the social net, social networking. And when you get together and you got a contagious disease, not good. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, uh, Shane Smolian sent me a really interesting article. It was a, a page out of a book called The Eye of Darkness. For all you conspiracy uh, theorists, uh, this was uh, done in 1981, he told me. But uh, it, it's really amazing. But look at this. Uh, the Wuhan 400 is a perfect weapon. This was They were talking about this uh, this bio uh, st bio uh, warfare stuff back in 1981, it appears. So it's uh, very interesting. I don't know anything about the book. Next time we have Shane on, we will certainly uh, ask him about it. I don't know if it was a. I think it must be a novel because it reads like it could be. But uh, somebody had some very interesting theories about this before, and now we're seeing one from a book in uh, 1981, and we'll find out whether that means uh, very much or not, folks. When I look at these things, I'm just just looking at the numbers that I see, I think the UK is going to get hit really badly here shortly because they have not been doing any social distancing at all, and that's not a very good sign. And we certainly want to, you know, keep uh, our best efforts uh, to try to do that and pray that we'll all get through this. Thankfully, if we can keep this death rate uh, under, uh, you know, of course, any a death rate at zero is best, but uh, then there'd be too many of us living on the planet. But if we can keep it under one and a half percent to two percent, uh, it's not acceptable, but at least uh, uh, some of us old people might make it through, so we'll have to uh, do uh, one thing at a time. Now, I'm going to do a little something a little different today, because I know you get tired of looking at all these patterns and stuff. But uh, someone asked me, of all the things that's happened to me in all my life, what if I had to sit down and pick one thing that was the most amazing thing that ever happened to me, uh, I would have to say not counting the birth of my two girls, 
but it would be the time when I was in uh, San Luis Obispo. I had just moved up to uh, uh, Avila Beach to live with uh, John Raffoni. I was uh, finishing the last part of the divorce. And uh, the lady that owned the Starbucks, uh, not a Starbucks, she was a, uh, it was a coffee shop there in uh, San Luis Obispo. Her husband went fishing with John all the time, and so I would go in there and have a coffee every once in a while. And she, she had, a, she was friends with a, uh, with a psychic lady, and she says, I want to give you a psychic reading as a guest. And she said, as a gift, she said, please let me do this. And you know, because I, you know, she knew that I had uh, was in the market and I had done some. This was long before the astrology book too folks i mean this was this was two years before i even wrote the book so i go out to um, uh, i went out to the uh, dunes there at pismo it was in april of 1985 and it was a a, a windy day sunny but windy and when you're coming off the pacific ocean uh, it's quite uh, quite chilly and i had a light jacket on and this lady uh, got out of the of her old beat up car. I mean, it was really old, and but she was incredibly uh, uh, beautiful. She had long gray hair uh, in her late 40s and um, skin like she's just really an incredibly attractive woman. And so we she put a blanket there, and I said it's going to be kind of chilly here. She said no, we'll be fine. And so we sat down. And we sat down, and she just chatted with me for a little bit. And then I noticed that all of a sudden it was no longer windy, and yet I could see the the uh, the uh, ocean grass, you know, going back and forth. And I knew it was windy, but I couldn't feel any wind. And I said, why is this? She said, well, I put a coating over the top of us. And I said, oh, dear, here we go. Anyway, for the next hour, she told me everything about myself that I had ever even thought about, knew about, or heard about. I mean, she knew how many kids I had, what my education was. I mean, it was it was like she was, and she didn't know me from, she really didn't. She might have known a few things, but she didn't know some of the things. And then she started to tell me about what was going to happen to my life for the remainder, which she said, you're going to live a very long time. She said, you're going to write many books. She said, you're going to travel all over the world many times. She said, you're going to have more friends than most people ever even dream about. And... Uh, she said, uh, um, you know, just some, you know, other things. Oh, and then this was the this was the most startling to me, and that was, you know, she said, uh, you're 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 planning on uh, using the money from your company, you know, to uh, start a new life. And she said, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. And that's when, you know, she told me that Drexel was going to be filing bankruptcy three years before they filed. So um, that was uh, one of the main things. But there were a couple things in there that, you know, we always have a secret. You know, um, I remember when I was uh, five years old, I took a piece of licorice from Mr. Bowers. Um, uh a candy shop without telling him, and I've always regretted that. And she reminded me of the day that I took the uh, licorice from Mr. Bauer's uh, uh, drugstore. However, it wasn't that, but it was something similar to that. But I, I have never blown, I was totally blown away. Well, after that, you know, I never, you know, I thought everything was wrong. I didn't think she had anything right, other than the fact she knew a lot about me. But uh, that's exactly what happened, folks. That's, uh, I swear to God, and... Mother God and country. But anyway, that was the most amazing thing. I had a few others, but that, that hands down was the most amazing thing that uh, that's ever happened to me. So anyway, there are people out there that can do stuff like that. I've only met one. So uh, well, there, well, there's been a couple others, you know, that uh, you, you run into through the years. But that's been, oh, someone else asked a question about my childhood. Gee, you guys are really getting tough on me. Okay. I was born in Clinton, Indiana. The first five years of my life, I lived pretty much uh, with my grandmother, my father's mother. And uh, that was all during World War II. Uh, after World War II, my mother and father were in Chicago. Uh, my mother was building airplanes. When uh, they finished building the airplanes, um, they went into, I forget, I don't remember exactly what they were doing, but my father had a job uh, in uh, a um, an oil company. And uh, they stayed there for another year to, to, to get some money to come back to Terre Haute, uh, where we moved to. And uh, I stayed in Terre Haute for uh, oh, quite a while. I went to a Catholic, high school, a Catholic grade school, St. Benedict's, uh, all through Jesuit school, uh, 12 years. And then I went to Schulte, Bishop Schulte High School, then went on to college, got a master's degree in business, um, and I did some stuff in chemistry and pharmacy, got a degree in that, and then went and got an MBA 
in um, uh, finance and marketing. And then I went to work for Eli Lilly, stayed with them for 10 years, did a little trading in between, yeah, just more than a little. And then in 1985, I decided to go out and do this by myself, and I've been doing it uh, pretty much uh, ever since. That's a, that's a two-cent version of uh, what's happening, so we'll see. Okay. My original my original goal was to be a baseball player, but um, just didn't quite have it by a long shot. Let me tell you, <laughs> I think I've told that story before going down to my tryout with the Cardinals. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on here and uh, cover a few things. We got another break coming up here in just a second, and uh, we'll see what's going on with these markets and double check. I moved to Tucson in 1994. Uh, that's when I moved in April of 94. I've been here ever since, and I've lived here for, well, it's about one of the longest places I lived. I lived in California for 26 years, and then I lived here for 26, and then I lived in Indiana, 20, and you come up to 80 pretty quick. Anyway, um, what, if someone does know the symbol for the Chinese market, please. Uh, FXI, uh, Maria, try FXI. That's the ETF. That would be the one that would be good. That, that's the one that I use. I don't know if it means very much at all. But, you know, it's held up pretty good. And, you know, the, the old Hang Seng. Look, I'm going to post the Hang Seng. It's, it's 3,000 points. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, Ruby's asked a question. If the market closes higher today with the, uh, all this bullish, uh, would you uh, consider that um, would that would be good and very bullish? And yes, I, I would say that. And if it does do that, I will start using moving averages, starting with the 200-day and the 400-day. And I'll start using the oscillators, mainly the... Uh, Stochastic. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, I posted a chart of the Dow showing you that it is much weaker than the rest of the market. Primarily, that's because of Boeing because it got hit so bad. Another thing, folks, the, the news, you got to love the news people. They're all talking about this is the greatest rally that's occurred since 1931. Eh, eh, eh. Let's have a judge's ruling what happened in 1931. Mr. Basil Chapman, please take the floor. When was the low in the stock market? Uh, uh, uh. July 8th, 1932. It dropped 90% from a high of 383. In September the 3rd of 29, it broke down into the crash of 1929. It was at 181. It went a little bit lower into November of that year, another two weeks. And then it rallied from November into April 1st of 1930. And then from 1930, it dropped all the way down into July of 1932. That was the start of the Great, De well, the Great Depression had already started, but it was already kicking into gear. That's when the market bottomed. 1938 was the biggest rally. I remember that because I said in 19 or 2009, when we were at that bottom at 6,400 in the Dow, that this was going to be the biggest rally that the Dow had seen since 1938, and it had still been going up. But anyway, that's my two cents worth. Okay, let's uh, remember that because I think it's uh, something that we need to pay attention to. I wanted to bring um, the Bitcoin to your attention, too, because I think it's uh, – you'll be able to see this. Oh, dear, I hit the wrong button. Give me one second here, and then we'll be okay. There we go. All righty. Yeah, get it up here. I want to see how the market opens. See what my 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 biggest hope today was that the, uh, the the boys were going to be able to pass this thing. But from what we understand, from what Tommy said on the opening show here, that there's one dude down in Kentucky that might uh, be do that. The gold projection was my next thing, uh, Duffy. So just bear with me here, folks. I'll tell you something. I I'm really I'm I'm long. I love gold and silver. I long them both. But uh, boy, I'm I'm really nervous, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Let me get let me get the chart up here uh, to show you what I'm watching here, because this is what's uh, here's where we are here. Uh, that's not the one I want. I want this one right here. Okay, here's the gold. This is where we are. Here's where we are in gold. All right, last week we were saying that you had a lot of support down there at 15, 1465, 1470. That was on the 4R chart. You know, we, we gave the, the, the signal to buy at that 1485 level, and we got all the way up to uh, the 78% level at 1675 the other day. And then we backed off to the 382 yesterday and touched it again today. And it's already up $25 from that level. So it's important that the gold for the April does not get below $1,600 an ounce. What concerns me is the fact that the open interest is not telling us that people are buying. And that, that means this is going up on short covering. And that's usually not a very good sign. We've seen this over and over again. If the open interest was increasing, you, you know, that, that I would say, wow, that, that would really be – you know that would really be uh, it would really be great, but unfortunately, um, that's not what's happening. But you got got to go with what the chart is telling you. The chart is telling you you got to stay bullish as long as it's above 1585 and near as I can tell, and as long as silver can stay above uh, say 1375. But you know it's rallied two dollars and a half an ounce. Uh, in just a you know very short period, uh, two dollars and twenty cents an ounce, in just two weeks. So that's telling you that there's a tremendous amount of uh, buying in there, and it was right at the seventy-eight percent level. But uh, the reason, and uh, hey, <laughs> there's an old saying. It says. Uh, uh, Running scared and loving it. That was by Roy Longstreet. In other words, the market keeps going in your direction, but you're scared, and that's what you should be, I guess. But I'm watching it very closely. As long as we can stay above 1585 in the April gold, I think we've got a shot at new highs above 1745. That's the 78% on the long term weekly chart that goes way back. Silver in a world all its own. 
Uh, you know, if we or if we're in a deflationary, we're not going to be using a lot of jewelry and other stuff. Maybe silver's going to not do as well as gold. But uh, if this uh, expanding money supply that we're seeing is coming to effect eventually, because that money's got to go somewhere, it's going to be too few uh, uh, or too many dollars chasing too few goods, and that's inflation. So pay attention to that. That's uh, that's going to be very interesting to look at also. So those are some of the ones that I'm playing atten paying attention. To. But really, you know, this week, this weekend is going to be incredibly important because we're going to reach levels now where the number of people dying is going to start startling people. It's no longer going to be 100 a day or 200 a day. You're going to see some numbers that are probably going to scare people. You got more people infected, and you just do the simple math. That's what we were doing here earlier this morning, just doing the simple math. We had this four weeks ago, folks. Four weeks ago, when we, we first started looking at this, this is, comes from uh, John Jameson. and I'm going to do it again because I think it's that important. You'll notice here that the infected people uh, four weeks ago was 8,700 in the United States, and that means we were expecting a doubling rate of every six days it was going to double. So the, the first time it went to 17,4, 38,4. Here we're in the fourth week, and instead of being at 70,000, I think we're close to 85 or 90,000. That's mainly because of New York. And if we stop the social interaction, these numbers are going to drop and it's going to be a lot better. Now, two things could happen. One is the doubling rate should could drop uh, from 6 to 10 or 12 or something like that, or maybe just stay at 6. Uh, you know, that would really that would really change the whole picture. That's what we don't know. Now, we, we hear about the warm weather and hopefully warm weather come in. And if you look at the, the heat map in the United States right now, the whole lower half of the United States is a uh, huge, huge heat index. I mean, it's uh, very, very hot. We're not hot here in Tucson, unusual, but, but uh, the rest of the the rest of the South is very, very hot. But you got to stay away from people, folks. I know, uh, and especially little kids. Little kids are like little culture tubes. And um, we get to see our kids on Skype, but uh, that's all we're going to see for a while. I, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of people that are not scared, uh, G7. Uh, you know, we, we see it. Uh, we're not seeing it so much in Tucson now. Tucson in the last two days has really, really started. To, and we've got really lucky here. We have, we think we've lost one or two people in the whole state. And uh, we only had one or two people here that are even that are even sick, and they're not even very sick from what the, the news tells us. So, if it's the problem is going to be this next two three days is the the New York, and then also London because London the people are riding a tube, they're not wearing masks, thousands of them going through King 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 Station all the time. I mean, it's just uh, it, it's just a shame that they're not doing it. Last weekend, I reported that they had that races, you know, like the Kentucky Derby. There, they had two hundred and ten thousand people on Friday, 210,000 people on Saturday, and 210,000 people on Sunday. And that they, they probably are all the same people, but they're all interacting. And those 210,000 go home to other people. And so that's what the problem was. So we'll see what happens. we got to take a little break. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Tom Hugard on the line. Tom, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Say, thanks for joining us. I know you've only got a short uh, skint here, but uh, the people would like to know why you started buying Limit Down on Sunday night when the whole world was uh, pitching in the towel. They, they, they throwing great accolades your way, my friend. You want to give us your thought process of what you were watching Sunday night? I'm sure you remember. Yes, I think um, I think I was inspired by one of the the great American legends, uh, Charlie De Francesca, uh, Charlie D. He, he he you can actually find the um, he did a seminar on CBOT on YouTube. It's a bit of a grainy quality, but one of the things he mentions I found in incredibly enlightening. He says whenever he placed a trade, it was always in correlation to something else. So if he was uh, trading on the long side, it might be because he was watching the Dow futures or he was watching the dollar yen. And uh, I kind of took that to heart that uh, one shouldn't always just stare blind on the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. One should try and correlate it to, for example, oil or gold or, or whatever one thinks is, 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 uh, is the correlation of the day. And the, that particular moment that you were talking about, Urza, I paid quite a lot of attention to the fact that uh, the, the European indices didn't seem to respond so negatively to the Dow Jones being limit down. And I kind of took that as a clue, uh, as a cue to, well, maybe this is not as bad as it as it is made out to be. I think there's a there's a great uh, uh, if one wants to uh, you know spend some time on technical analysis, studying intermarket divergences is an incredibly interesting field because you often get an early clue to when a market perhaps isn't as strong as as we would like it to be or is not as weak as we like to be. As a fact, I, I'll let the listeners into a little, uh, a little secret. Um, I often watch the Dow, um, the DAX, and the S&P 500 on free charts next to each other. And I'll watch it on a two-minute, on a five-minute chart. And if two of the indices makes new fresh highs, but the third index doesn't confirm the two other indices are doing, i.e., if, say, the DAX, sorry, if the S&P and the Dow is making a higher high on a five-minute chart, but the DAX is making a lower high, that's the, kind of, that's the kind of signal that I want then to go in and short the DAX index. So I find that that, that, little, that little trick is something I've studied to great, great extent. And, you know, nothing is ever perfect. You know that. But uh, it is, it's, it's good enough for me to be, to be able to rely on. And it, I did that on a Sunday night. 
Wow, it's just it's totally me. Only know two people that were doing that, Tom, you and Larry Williams. And uh, Larry got back to me this morning, and, and I told him how I said I think it was really cool that you did that, and I've known him 50 years. I said, that might be your best call. He said, Larry, it might have been. He said, but you're the only person that reminded me of it. <laughs> so no one really cared. <laughs> hey, Tom, I, I know you're real busy at the opening, so we'll let you go, but thank you for being on. We'll have you on very soon. So stay inside. God bless bless and take care of that lovely family, my friend. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All bet. the best to all you of bet. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep. Yep. Trader Tom, folks, uh, there's a pretty good idea is looking at the tape reading. And if you ever want to learn a real good course on tape reading, all you got to do is pick up the book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator by Jesse Livermore, and that's it. Folks, since uh, Tom came on the air, gold has dropped $20 an ounce. Folks, that is not good action. And that's what's concerning me is the fact that this open interest is just not uh, doing. Now, what we've decided to do is we, we bought this gold at a really good price. And if it gets below 1605 in the uh, uh, in the what you call it, we're going to have a situation where we'll break even and then we'll be able to uh, take a look at that, you know, we'll be able to see what's going on. So we'll see what's going on. Oh, boy, that mess. Good news. I just got some great news. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, sorry, folks. I had to answer something, and that makes my day. Hold on just a second here. All right. Let's take a quick look at a couple of these charts that I wanted to show you and the reason why they're so important. I've already posted the one on the uh, gold. I want to post the silver chart because uh, we've had a $2.20 rally off the bottom. That bottom was exactly at 11.77. And the low was 1167. We've rallied all the way up to $15, and uh, I think that we've got a situation where we could really be uh, looking at. But oh, by the way, we're being told uh, one of our listeners here at TFNN is told we're slipping April gold switches over to June gold uh, in three days. So that's another one that we want to look at. That's probably why there's a little difference. But uh, the open interest is not. Ex I've already double checked that, uh, Jay. That is the the open interest is just not. Uh, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, we'll see with that. I, I will double check that open interest, but I, I, well, I'll, I'll triple check it. So if I'm wrong, I'm going to be telling you guys Monday morning that I'm wrong. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to be able to do it at the break here, but I'll try to get uh, loaded up. But the GLD is what we're looking at, uh, 159. Uh, if we go to 158, you only have to risk one point. It's a, it's an ETF, and if we, you buy it at 159, it goes to 158. That's not for me, because if it breaks that 382 level, folks, that's that's not a good sign, because really strong bull markets, like we've seen on the downside with the S&P and stuff, you'll notice that the high, how could the high be exactly 382 in the NASDAQ and the S&P uh, exactly? I mean, that's uh, and it's a five-day rally. That's a that's a bad sign for the bulls, in my in my uh, opinion. The good part is we're trading good, and we're having good volume up and down. These the fact that the market rallies, um, you know, 30, 25 percent in the Dow in three days. I mean, come on, this is the kind of stuff that makes the news and brings people. Actually, two people called me yesterday saying, "Is this the time to buy? What what were the good values?" You know, I mean, holy cow, that's a big switch. You know, so. Let's pay. Let's pay close attention to that. But let me uh, let me bring this gold chart up to you one more time, just to show you why I think it's so important. The the uh, let's get this up here. If we are in fact in this area where they're going to be dumping money into the market, longer term, this is going to be good to to gold. But if we break below that uh, sixteen dollar level. $1,600 level in the, the spot gold, that'll give us a price level all the way down, 100 to almost $80 lower down at 15, uh, 1550 Now, that would be a perfect Gartley pattern, and uh, that would be one that I I would be looking at. But right now, you, you have a chance to buy it, and you don't have to risk very much. Yet The deflation is coming, Marshall. I, and those of you that are followers or uh, Nuriel Robini, the guy from uh, the Stern Business School at New York College, New York City University, uh, he's a, a, incredibly bearish about being in the deflation environment. And, and a lot of it is because of the supply chains, because right now the supply chains are working good. But if the, the, the infections get worse and less and less people can go to work, the supply chains 
chains are going to get screwed up, and that's what we've got to be watching. These next three weeks are going to be really, really critical, folks. God help the president. I hope he reconsiders the thing about Easter. I'm afraid that if he if he comes about Easter, the guy that left on Easter before might come back. So we don't want to we don't want to have anything like that happen again. So yeah, yeah, the, all these yeah, the, that's true. Yeah, hey, I'm a technician, folks. I'm just looking at the charts. All I know is we had a 382 retracement on a five-day rally, and when they hit it exactly like that, you got to pay attention to those numbers. That doesn't happen by accident. And uh, so that's my two cents worth, and I'm sticking to it. So back there, uh, okay. I uh, just bought ES, uh, Larry, his berries to stop under. Okay, let's move on here to see what's going on here, to what's going on. Okay, oh, that's a, that's the thing from, uh, yeah. All right, we'll be right back, 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, I just pulled up the the open interest for the uh, gold for the gold contract here at the CME. You'll notice the April contract here; uh, it uh, it dropped open interest of forty nine thousand five hundred and forty six, but the June increased by thirty one thousand one sixty two. That means that sixteen thousand people left 
that market. So uh, I didn't do the, the all of the all of the options, just the, the main ones that are trading there. So uh, to me, that's a drop in open interest because when you don't when you're not replacing it, that's a uh, that's a bad sign. Now, there's a lot of options that go on there too. So you'll be able to take a look at it. I, I don't see anywhere near open interest of uh, 561,000 contracts. That's not what the open interest is. I just posted it, and I let me double check it. Maybe my eyes are bad. Um, no, it, the open interest in the June is only 345,000. So anyway, that's my two cents worth. Uh, why they didn't replace it is a little, little scary to myself, but we'll see. Well, we're going to know Monday because if this market is, uh, is going to be uh, either bearish or bullish Monday, that'll give us an idea. The silver's still been in this, uh, we've been in a 35 cent, 40 cent trading range for four days. Up at this high level, that could be very good. But again, that's not showing open interest increasing uh, uh, either. Um, try to, if you make sure you pay close attention to the future section of the 24 7 newsletter, folks, because there's going to be some really great opportunities coming up. We've had some good bounces, and we got to be concerned about the supply chains and stuff like that. So we really need to be able to uh, really be able to do it. That's a that's the main thing that we're paying close attention to, for sure. And let's keep our prayers with everybody because we live an interesting time. And believe me, there's going to be a lot of uh, problems with this uh, confinement that we have. But we'll all get through it, and we're all going to be better for it. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And try to help somebody that needs help, folks, because now more than ever, some people are in trouble. Even if they just need food delivered or taking them to the doctor or whatever it happens to be, just make sure you have some safety precautions in there and do the things that they tell you to do. Wash your hands, breathe deeply, and carry a big stick. 